Welcome. In this session, we'll explore a couple of graphs that are non-bipartite. Let's suppose that we're given graph 3, and it has six nodes, or vertices, at 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, and 6. And suppose that the edges are these, that 1 is connected to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 3, 4 is connected to 5, and 5 is connected to 6. We can see immediately that this graph has two components. 1, 2, 3 form a subgraph that is distinct from the 4, 5, 6 subgraph. We can also see that 1, 2, 3 is not bipartite. That is, it's not possible to separate these into two uh, distinct vertex sets such that edges only connect from one to another. And the reason is that there's a cycle present in the graph. This subgraph has a tree structure, so it's bipartite, but the entire graph combined is non-bipartite because this component has a cycle. We can now write the adjacency matrix for this as it'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so all of the diagonals are 0, which gives me the space that I need to represent this. And now we can almost automatically fill these in. 1 is connected to 2. 1 is connected to 3, 0, 0, 0, 2 is connected to 1, 2 is connected to 3, 0, 0, 0, 3 is connected to 1, 3 is connected to 2, 0, 0, 0, 4 is not connected to any of 1, 2, 3, indeed 4, 5, and 6. So I can now fill this entire section, this entire block, if we're thinking of matrices as being block partitioned, with zeros. And now I can fill in 4 is connected to 5, and it is not connected to 6. 5 is connected to 4, and is connected to 6. 6 is not connected to 4, and 6 is connected to 5. So as I partition these, I can see that I can block partition this matrix such that the diagonals are non-zero and the non-diagonals are zero. And that's a, that is a property of the matrix. And we could see that 1, 2, 3 are connected components, 4, 5, 6 are a connected component. And because there's no edge that goes from this subgraph to this subgraph, this piece, and therefore by symmetry, this piece, all have to be filled with zeros. So the partition structure of this matrix corresponds to the component structure of the graph. Now, suppose that I make one small change. Suppose that I now want to look at graph 4. And the difference between graph 4 and graph 3 is now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make this a cycle, and I'm going to connect these two components. Let's deal with this part first. 4 is now connected to 6, so that is 1, 2, 3. 4 is connected to 6, and 1, 2, 3, 6 is now connected to 4. The addition of this cycle has not changed these parts. However, when 2 is connected to 4, that is changing this entry, and it will also change by symmetry 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 will now also change and so, there is no longer a simple partition. We can observe, though, that there's nearly a partition. 
That is, if we were to try to develop subgraphs or to develop components for this, we would be quite tempted to break it between two and four. That is, there's in some sense a richer density of connections in this subgraph and a richer density of connections in this subgraph. And then the two subgraphs are loosely connected. We'll explore that idea in a later uh, lecture. Let's summarize what we've learned in these lessons. We're now able to characterize a graph. We can write an adjacency matrix from a specification or from a diagram. We can draw a graph from an adjacency matrix. And if we wish, we can begin coding and we could take an edge list and we could transform that into an adjacency matrix.